Brother Fred, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. You know, it's important for us to hear his voice. We can uh, study his word and, and not hear his voice, and we don't really have the direction that we need. It's very important when we hear his voice, well, it's going to take us into a place uh, of the supernatural realm where impossibilities are possible. Mm -hmm. uh, God is speaking. He's always speaking. And some people don't comprehend it. And so they uh, don't think that he's speaking, but he is speaking. He's always uh, speaking and he's drawing you into his presence, uh, calling you uh, by his voice to be with him and there in that intimate personal relationship, uh, he equips you and prepares you and sends you out with grace to do uh, what he has called you to do. Amen. And so that's the basic essence uh, of this message. The voice is calling. And uh, I want to go back, first of all, just to review a couple of verses that we've uh, studied uh, in this series. And the first one is John 18, 37. That says, if you love the truth, if you seek the truth, you will hear his voice. And then uh, in Matthew 4, 4, it says, we don't live by bread alone, but by what God is saying, what is constantly proceeding out of his mouth constantly proceeding out of his mm -hmm. mouth. What he's, what he's saying, that's the reason we're talking about the voice, uh, because we can hear the voice. We all can hear the voice. Just simply, if you seek the Lord, uh, seek his truth, love his truth, you will hear his voice. He is always speaking. And we live not by what he has said, but by what he is saying, what is presently coming out of his mouth, what is proceeding. And what is it that's proceeding out of his mouth? Well, his breath is his spirit. Mm -hmm. And there are vibrations in that spirit, mm -hmm. in the spirit. And so when he speaks, uh, there are vibrations that come and bring life into us that impart life to us and life uh, to all living creatures. And he upholds, he upholds the whole uh, world uh, by what is proceeding out of his mouth. Again, it's not by what he has said, but by what he is saying. A faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. not having heard. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So we have that capacity to hear by hearing the word of God, hearing of what he is saying. So the first thing I want to talk about is the, the voice of God. And there we've had a a couple of uh, verses on it that are very important. But what I want to uh, talk about for just a moment is it's often not in words. It's not when he speaks, he's always speaking, but he's often doesn't speak with words like man speaks. And I want to really emphasize that point because a lot of people are asking for answers from God and they are expecting him to speak like a man speaks and they miss what he's saying. Well, we do not have to comprehend what mm -hmm. he's saying in order for him to speak. He's speaking. Right. And many times we do not understand that, do not comprehend what he's saying. And that's because we're not looking uh, for the way that he speaks. And first of all, the first point I want to make, there's a, just several different ways that he speaks and it's not by, it's not by words. And I want to really emphasize that. First of all, his presence. When, mm, mm. Who is God? Well, we know that he is the voice. In the beginning, before time was measured, the voice was speaking. The voice was God. The voice is God. So whenever the voice is with you, when you're in presence, and a lot of times you feel his presence. Uh, there's so many times that just when worshiping and praising him and mm -hmm. speaking the word of God, I feel his presence. Now that means the voice is there with me. 
he is speaking because he is the voice. But I may not hear with my ears, but he's there. Mm. And, and what he's doing, he's imparting things into me. It's the same thing for you. He's imparting things into you. Mm. So when you feel or you sense or you see that the presence of God is there with you, uh, then he is speaking with you. It's just not what you can hear with these words because he is the voice. Mm. When the presence is there, it's the voice with you uh, speaking. And, and uh, a lot of times we don't comprehend it. So I want to emphasize uh, this that Job said. Uh, we'll look at it a couple of different ways in Job uh, 33. Mm -hmm. It says you don't comprehend what he says. Many people don't. Okay. Which one do you want me to read? Yeah, read first those two. Okay. Job 33, 14. Indeed, God speaks once or twice, yet no one notices it. Oh, mm. let me mm. just say that I hear lots of people say they are asking God for direction mm -hmm. and they're not hearing him speak. And so they're just sitting and not moving because they do not notice it when he speaks because they expect him to speak like man. Read this other, this other translation. Okay, uh, this is out of the message, Job 33, 12 through 14, or just 14. God always answers one way or another. Oh, that's an important statement mm -hmm. right there. God always answers. Now, mm -hmm. is your mind saying, well, he hasn't answered me yet? You ask him a question, and he always Ways answers one way or another, even when people don't recognize his presence. Okay, so if his presence is there, he's answering. He always answers. Well, that gives me a thrill in yeah. my heart oh, yeah. to know he always answers. But sometimes we don't hear him because we're not thinking he's answering us. We're not hearing the way he speaks. Sometimes his voice is like waters. Oh, hallelujah. Of water. Sometimes it's like oh, thunder. Hallelujah. So, so we don't hear it if we're expecting him to speak like a man. Let's look at Revelation. Revelation 14. 14 2. And I heard a voice from heaven. It was from heaven. Like the voice of many waters and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpist playing on their harps. Oh, hallelujah. Wow. That's him. He's answering. Woo! It's coming from heaven, but it's not the way man speaks. It's not with words that man would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hallelujah. here's another one. He answered. He speaks in, in dreams, dreams and visions. visions. Oh, so you may see Hallelujah. some things yeah. even in the night season. He's speaking to you. Yes. But you're expecting him to say like a man speaks, but he speaks in dreams and he drew, he speaks in a variety of ways. What we're a variety of ways. What we're doing now is just going over some different ways so that you begin to realize and recognize he's speaking, but it may not be with the words a man would say. Well, let me go back to the vision, and some of you may have joined us a little bit later, but I had a vision of the special needs school that Paul and Pat in Albuquerque uh, are about to uh, start, and um, I had a vision and above the door that I saw Paul coming out of with a little boy holding his hand, it said, Precious Gems. Well, I believe the Lord's voice was saying that these children are precious gems to him. And so that's his voice. Okay. It's his voice, but it wasn't words. It wasn't, it wasn't words, words like men. There were no words in it. Lots of times I've had dreams. I've seen things in dreams, but not words. Right. Dreams. So God speaks in many different ways. He speaks with the unction of God. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Well, unction of God. Here, What is an unction of God? Well, that is, is something that dwells on the inside of us that connects with the supernatural realm. And that is the unction. When we know 
right from wrong. We know uh, whether this is of the Lord, this is of the enemy, this is of my flesh. It is something that connects with the supernatural realm and it has a voice. But it's not words. It's not words. The words of man. Read the uh, uh, first John 2 20. Oh, you don't want me to read Job? Oh. About dreams and visions. Well, okay, read, read Job. Then. Okay. Oh, wait, I it. Okay. Job 33, 14 through 18. For God may speak in one way or another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of, of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. He oh, keeps man. back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Dreams and visions are very important. There are purposes for those and they're sealed to you and you don't even know, but he, he's giving you instructions that are going to keep That's you from right. destruction in the dreams and visions that he gives you. So the, these are not necessarily words. There may not be any words in it, but yet he's sealing instruction to you. It's going to keep you from destruction. A very important way that he that. talks, but now we've moved on to unction, yes. the unction of the Holy Spirit. And so read First John mm -hmm. 2, 20. 20. This is out of the Amplified Bible. But you have been anointed. You hold a sacred appointment from you have been given an unction from the Holy One. And you know the truth or you are known and you know all things. Hallelujah. Unction. Yeah. Here's an unction. It's not words. It's not words. But it's something on the inside of you. It's an anointing. It's an appointment. It's a significant appointment. Yes. It's an unction of the Holy One. It's coming from the Holy Amen. One. And it's appointing you to an assignment. Uh, and it's going to equip you. He's going to equip you with His grace to fulfill the assignment that you have from hearing the unction of the Holy One, but it but is he not said that It connects us with the supernatural <laughs> realm. Okay. So that we, we enter into that supernatural realm with that unction. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Now the next one I believe is about uh, Romans 8, 14. Do you have Romans 8, 14? Yes. Okay. And this is out of the Passion Translation. The mature children of God are those who are moved and I love this, by the impulses are the vibrations of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Woo. Are you moved <laughs> by the impulses? Or do you have to hear oh, a word? Hallelujah. You have to have, hear a word in English. Oh, oh or, or can oh. you just be moved by the impulses? See, oh, hallelujah. if you're a mature child of God, mm -hmm. mature child of God, you're moved by impulses of the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. What I have emphasized here are just several mm. different ways mm. that God is speaking. And by no means am I saying that's the only way he speaks. He speaks in many, many ways without words. Whew. Hallelujah. Without words. So don't, don't sit down and ask him a question. Sit down and just wait mm -hmm. till you hear mm -hmm. man's mm -hmm. words. Don't hear the words. Don't expect it. It has to come through the words. Now, that doesn't mean he won't speak through and use words. Yeah. But the majority of times that the Lord speaks to me, it's not with words. It's with impulses. It's with inspirations. It's it's with, he seals things to mm -hmm. my heart. So I get things in many different ways as he speaks to all of us in many, many different ways. But people want to limit him, put him in a box and say, you have to speak to me this way mm -hmm. uh, with so that I hear a word, I comprehend what you're saying. And, and that's putting him in a box and, and he just doesn't operate according to your boxes and limitations. He is the God oh, of the creation, the almighty God. He can speak how he wants to. He, he's got ways that he will speak to your spirit to speak Amen. to you and bring you to himself. He's calling you, drawing you to himself. So I did put some time and effort on 
on just mentioning those things today because I believe they're important that we have to have a broader perspective. His voice is speaking. Uh, his presence is with you. And don't say that you have to comprehend everything that he's saying and that you have, it has to speak to you one way or another. Let him decide yeah, yeah. how he wants to speak to you. It will free you up. It, yeah, will take, hallelujah. it will take the shackles off of you. It will set you free yeah, and set you at dancing because you'll Amen. know when Amen. he's speaking to you. Okay, now the real core of the message is the calling, but, but he speaks in many ways to call you to him. Now, I want to go back. The best way to understand calling is to look at Genesis, at, at the creation mm -hmm. and look at his voice in creation. Mm -hmm. And I love to start from John 1. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, mm -hmm. before time was measured, this is verse 1, it's out of the voice uh, translation. In the beginning, before God, before time was measured, the voice was speaking. The voice was God and the voice is, is God. God. And, uh, Everything that was created was created by the voice, and without him was not anything created. And in him, in the voice, is life, and the life mm -hmm. is the light of men. And then we can go down to verse 14, and mm -hmm. we see that the voice took on flesh, and we know him as Jesus. Jesus. Okay, so we're, now we're going to look at creation and look at it from the account in Genesis, and we see that he created things with his voice. Uh, all creation it was created, all the universe was created with his voice, by his commands, by his declarations. Let mm. there be light. Hallelujah. Okay, but what we're really studying is about calling. So what is calling? Well, it, it's right there in Genesis 1. Uh, it talks about after he has commanded light to be, he brings order. Mm, he brings mm, order mm. out of chaos. That's our God. Mm, and that, mm, it, it's, he uses the calling to bring things into position. Oh, he uses yeah, calling. Yeah. Now, this has implications for you because sure, this no, is no, the no, precedent. No, no. This is the first time that calling is mentioned. And so it's going to have a precedent for you and me. This shows uh, what happens. Now, I'm just looking and thinking in, about uh, this uh, creation here. And this is when he brings order. He puts things in order with his calling. So read these verses here in Genesis 1. Well, let me just... Before time itself was measured. No, no, uh -oh. go down. Genesis. Okay. okay. There's just a reference to Genesis. I can afford it. Okay, it's just okay. it. Let there be light. Okay, that's verse 3. Then, verse 4, he says, He called the light. Okay, here it is. This is important. He called the light day. See, he's bringing order to things with the calling. Oh, the, he's oh, calling things into Jesus. existence. And now, Woo! see, he created things, and now he's going to put mm. things in order. And, and you, you've been created, but now he's calling you Whoa, to put you into oh, your position oh, yeah. or to bring identity to you. Mm. He's calling mm. light. He's calling it day. And he's calling night. night. He's, he's calling darkness night. You see how important calling is? But mm -hmm. it comes from his voice. So he's calling things. So first he created with his voice, and now he's bringing order uh, order to things. He's now, separating things. He's separating things out, separating things into himself. Now, I want you to give you an example. See, he, he has created the creeping things. He, he's creeping, created all creeping things with his voice, but he hasn't named things. Oh, this is an important point here. He hasn't named things. And so he has given to Adam, a human being, the right, the authority to name the animals. Now, why would he do that? Because he's giving authority uh, and stewardship over the garden. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and then this is his oh, implication for you. When he, when he calls you, he's going to be getting into your identity. He's going to show you that he has authority over it. It's like Adam. Adam in the garden could identify uh, the names. But see, the, they were not named until Adam named them because God gave Adam the authority to name them because he was the steward over them. He had authority over them. Now, let's turn it to you and me and to the heroes of faith. When he calls us, that means he's showing his authority over us. He's bringing identity into us. He's, he's bringing us out of where we've mm -hmm. been. He's mm -hmm. pointing us in a new direction. That's what calling is. And it happens. Uh, it, that's the way he operates. He does it with his voice. First he creates, and now he's going to separate things unto himself. Ooh, he's, going to, he's going to separate them out. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. You, you want to be separated out from yes, the world, yes. separated into holiness and consecrated for God's purposes and uh, his assignments for you. It all relates to calling. And we mm. see that implication and the example of Adam calling the animals. And what he called them, he gave them that identity. And he... Uh, he had authority over the who was stewarding, and that was a part of his responsibility to call them by name. Okay, now here let's go into the Old Testament where God begins to call the heroes of faith. And he called Abram. He called Abram. He called many people throughout the Bible. But we're going to just look at a couple of examples. We see that he called Abram and he gave him a new name. See, when when Ooh. God comes into your life and he calls you unto himself, he's calling you unto himself, he's giving you a new direction, and he wants you to be there uh, in an intimate relationship with you. He's got a new purpose and a direction for you, and he calls you unto himself so he can have that intimate relationship with you and send you out, appoint you, anoint you, and give you that unction of the Holy Spirit to move in the new direction. So first we see it with the, him calling uh, Abram, and he changed his name to Abraham, father of many nations. Mm -hmm. So he's changed his name. And when God changes your name, it's because he's got a new purpose and a new direction. And he's going to show you your identity. When God gets involved and he calls you unto himself, he's going to equip you and send you out upon an appointed time, mm -hmm. an appointed uh, a place uh, with an appointment and an assignment and he gives you the grace uh, to bring it forth. Oh, and, and we all are called. You are called. And so this message is for you to understand your calling and how to, uh, to discover that calling. Maybe you haven't discovered it mm. yet. But I'm going to say some things tonight that will shock you. Okay, so oh, let's go on. Yeah. Another one was Jacob. Mm -hmm. he, he called Jacob. Mm -hmm. Jacob mm -hmm. was the deceiver. He was the supplanter. He was somebody who stole the birthright from his mm -hmm. brother. Uh, and, and, but God, see, when God got involved, he called him unto himself, and, and he gave him a new name. And after that day, uh, his, he didn't walk the same way because he had encountered God. He had been called to God, and, and he had been appointed to a new assignment, okay? So Sherry, well, let's just think about Hallelujah. Jacob there. From, his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. To Israel. Israel means... Uh, One who prevails with God. Or has power with God. He's or a prince God. with God. Okay, so Sherry, God spoke to her one day, and what did he do? I was getting out of my car, and, and, and I was closing the door, and the, the, I heard... The Lord say to me, I'm changing your name. And I said, okay, what is it? And he said, from this day forward, I call you Israel. And so I said, okay. And then I looked it up and, and 
That's what it means. One who prevails with God, one, uh, a prince with God. Uh, and, and so, uh, that was exciting. And it also gave me new direction in my life. It gave me encouragement. It gave me, um, a boost of, of, uh, enthusiasm, if you will. And knowing that the Lord was with me and that I would prevail with him. Hallelujah. And, and so it was, a it was a, a, a wonderful, wonderful day, uh, to, to be renamed. So when God called your name, he has a purpose and a reason to do that. Yeah. He's calling you to himself, but he's going to equip you and prepare you to send you out in a new direction, a direction that you hadn't imagined. Because a lot of people think, well, if I'm good at doing something, that must be what I'm called to do. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you, grace is different than that. That's right. But when, when God calls you to do something impossible, and you realize, oh, well, I can't do that. That's I, right. I, I just feel overwhelmed. When it's impossible, he's going to give you the grace. And, and his grace is going to kick in when you realize that you cannot do it yourself. Mm -hmm. He has mm -hmm. called each of you to something you cannot do in your natural ability. Ooh, but so many people are willing to settle for what they can do in their own abilities. Mm -mm. Well, you don't need grace. You don't need grace if you're just going to do what you can do with your abilities. But that's not the reason for calling. Calling is to put you on a higher plane, to take you someplace mm -hmm. where you cannot go on your own, send you someplace mm -hmm. that you cannot get there on your own. Now I'm going to just turn to the category of all believers. What kind of a calling? And you might say, well, I know uh, some big, big name minister, they, they may be called, but I, I'm not called. Let me, let me clarify mm -hmm. that. Let's think about 2 Timothy 1, 9, mm -hmm. because it says you are called. You mm -hmm. are called. Mm -hmm. You are called. Right. I want you to read this here. Okay. 2 <clears throat> Timothy 1, 9, who has saved us and called us. If you're saved, you're called. You have a calling. Mm-hmm. With a holy calling. It's a holy calling. Woo! Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Okay, this has nothing to do with what you are good at. Right, exactly. <laughs> Not my work. You, you huh? cannot go down the checklist and say, well, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And a lot of people do that. And they think, oh, that's, that's my calling because I can do these things. And they miss it. They miss it because it's his purpose. It's not what you're good at. Right. It's what he purposes for you to That's do. Right. And he will equip you and resource you to do what he has mm -hmm. called you to do. This is. This but according is so to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Oh, ho, ho. He knew us before time began. He knew Pat. He knew you Lane. Okay. So what I want you to do now is to read it from a couple of different versions of translations okay. of the Bible. And this will give us more explanation of our calling. If you're saved, you're called. Okay. This is from the Amplified. For he delivered us and saved us and called us with a holy calling. It's a holy calling. A calling that leads to a consecrated life or a life that is set apart or separated, a life of purpose. Oh, I, I love this explanation there in the Amplified. That's the reason we talked about it. Why I talk about the Amplified, it's another way of looking at it because it explains to us what that holy calling is. It's a calling where we're consecrated, where we're, our set life apart. is set apart, uh, and it's for his purpose. Yes. It's not for what I'm good at. It's for mm -hmm. his purpose. Mm -hmm. We have to find that. We have to hear his voice Amen. to know that he's calling us and what he's calling us to. Okay. And, and then in the Phillips <clears throat> translation, before time began, 
he planned to give us in Christ the grace to achieve this purpose. Okay, you have to be called into a relationship, intimate relationship with him. You find out that you have a calling beyond your ability, and that's when he gives you the grace, that's the empowerment mm -hmm. to fulfill uh, what he has called you. I now, I have just several verses I want to talk about that uh, talk about calling. Just to, We'll just quickly go through these, but first of all, Romans uh, says that there our calling is irrevocable. Irrevocable. Mm -hmm. That means it's never going to go away. You're called. Yeah, that's and, right. And, that's and whether right. you turn your back on God or whether you follow him, you're still called. You mm -hmm. still have a, a calling. Now, Ephesians uh, 1, it's a prayer. And so you need to be praying <laughs> that you can walk in your calling. And what he's saying here, mm -hmm. you need the spirit of wisdom and revelation just to know, oh. just to mm -hmm. know your calling. And, and uh, so many people say, oh, I don't need the Spirit. Well, you don't know your calling, mm -mm. quite frankly, because it's the Spirit it, it of wisdom and revelation that's going to show you what your calling is. Okay, what's the next verse here after that? Ephesians well, chapter 4. Okay, it says it's a worthy calling. Yes. It, it, it's a high calling. It's a worthy mm -hmm. calling. It's something that we need to recognize. It has a value. It's so valuable that we need to put our attention and be diligent toward that mm -hmm. calling. Philippians, and uh, Philippians, Paul calls yeah, chapter it. Chapter 3. Yeah. Calls it a goal. That's our goal. Our goal. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So our goal of our life on this earth is to answer the call, to find out Hallelujah. what the call is. Okay, got one more thing. Well, I like to stop here with Peter. Mm -hmm. Let's read this. This this is we'll uh, finish this section about some of the verses that talk about calling. There are many, many more, but I just want to give you a flavor. What is mm -hmm. the flavor of calling? The voice is calling you. Mm -hmm. okay, let's read this verse. Second Peter 1.10. This is how they amplified. Therefore, believers, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. You have to be diligent. Be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. For by doing these things, actively developing these virtues, you will never stumble in your spiritual growth and will live a life that leads others away from sin. Oh, hallelujah. Do you want to fulfill oh, that right there? That, that's pretty important. That's pretty amazing to impact us. Yeah, we'll live a life that leads others yeah. away from sin. You have to be diligent. And, and towards that calling and get your life lined up with your calling. Now, this is the final thing I'm going to talk about, and that is the application. How can we know our calling? And, and I'm just going to base it here on Romans 12, uh, verses 1 and 2. These are very important uh, verses, and I know you know them, but we're going to go over them again because this is going to be the way that you can know the will of God. And what is the will of God? The will of God is going to show you your calling. And that's what you need to know. What is my calling? Uh, and this is the way to do it. It's just a simple application. It's a, li it's a lifetime journey of putting your body, all of your being on the altar. Amen. And so that you can renew your mind so that you can know what your calling is. Okay, read these verses. Okay, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And this is out of the Amplified. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourself, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intellectually, intellectual act of worship. Many of us think about worship. We think about 
music and instruments and singing and but see when you present yourself to the lord that's, that's true, true worship, worship. <laughs> that is true worship right there and it says here and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial oh like the that. world is superficial values and customs but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind or focusing on godly values and attitudes so that you may prove yourself what the will of god is that which is good acceptable perfect in his plan and his purpose is calling for you okay so there it is in hallelujah a i'll just go back over it. in a nutshell if you want to know your calling and we all need to because we are all called and it's not by what we've heard but it's what he's calling us he's calling us unto himself and he's going to there when we come into the intimate relationship so how do we get there well we have to present our whole being our bodies that, that includes our mouth and our eyes and our hair ears what we're hearing all of that present it to the lord as a living sacrifice and, and that is our reasonable uh uh call service of worship and then we'll know his will it's a progressive mm -hmm. it's a progressive journey uh, where we'll know his good, uh, his good will, his uh, 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 pleasing will, acceptable, his acceptable, will. and his uh, perfect will. So that, that's a process right there, uh, progression. And, and let me just give you a personal example of what happened to me. Now, I had heard his voice a few times uh, before I did uh, what I was going to tell you, uh, but only a few times, not, not very often. But then... Uh, in October of 1982, I, I went off uh, by myself for a few days. I fasted during those days, and, and I just walked the woods, walked in the woods, and I was walking and praying with the Lord, and, and he called me by name. Now, I want to give a little bit of background because that my given name is Freddie, uh, but when I grew up, I changed it to Fred. I shortened it to Fred as a professional. So my professional name then uh, always focused on Fred. But uh, and so when I was walking in the woods, or fasting over days, uh, seeking him, wanting to know uh, what he had in store for me, and he called me by name. He said, Freddie. And what I thought was interesting, so he didn't get the memo that I had shortened it to Fred. <laughs> He, he still called me Freddie because he, he's getting there into my life. He, he's getting up uh -huh. close. He's Amen. getting up intimate. Uh, and, and he's calling me by name. And he's changing my life. And he's changing my direction. And that, that was really the beginning of my calling. And, and I knew from that that I was to teach the unsearchable riches of Christ. Uh, and to go mm -hmm. around the world to teach the unsearchable riches of Christ of Christ and that that was my calling and that's how it happened and so you see I had laid my life down on his altar I was seeking him I was serious about it I had gone off by myself for days fasting only drinking water and just spending time prayer day and night for days seeking him and he was seeking me yeah, mm -hmm. I I didn't know it, but he was seeking me. He knew my name. He called me. He called me into a purpose, and he gave me the grace to do it, uh, to be a teacher uh, of of God's uh, word, of of His wisdom, of His message, the message of the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah! And, and so, if you want to find your calling, and, and it's the only thing really that matters about being on this earth. We need to know who we are. And when God calls your name, that means he's getting involved in your life. 
He's changing it, moving you in a new direction. He's going to give you specific calling with uh, assignments, mm -hmm. and, instructions, and, and and that you know that anointed one, the anointed one, see, is someone appointed to do something significant for the Lord. So if you're anointed by the Lord, then that means you've been appointed to do something significant on this earth, that you're not here just uh, uh, going around aimlessly, but you have a purpose. Each one of you has a purpose, uh, and it doesn't just start one time, and this is not just a one-time event. This is a lifetime journey. You can start this way every morning of your life. Amen. And, and even in the night seasons, he's calling you. He is mm -hmm. constantly calling you, constantly uh, speaking to yes. you. The uh, voice is calling. The voice is speaking, mm -hmm. has always been speaking, will always be speaking. He's the voice. The voice is speaking. He's calling you. It's on a day-by-day -day journey, and he is not telling you what's ha going to happen in 10 years and not communicating with you for those 10 years because, no, there's a voice behind you, you saying, this is the way, walk, walk in, in it. it. He wants that intimate relationship with you. He doesn't want just to connect with you every 10 or 15 years. He wants that intimate relationship with you and see proverbs said that the heart of man uh lays out the plans but it's god that, that directs the steps when he yeah. does that with that voice that is ringing in your uh, spirit this is the way walk in it thank you for being here i'm going to turn it over to sherry Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This was a wonderful, wonderful message. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you. The Lord is calling, and we want to hear what he has to say to each and every one of us. And as I open up the floor, uh, I want to, to pray over everyone that has joined us tonight. And this is a just a tremendous uh, group tonight. Um, I pray over you in the name of Jesus that you will hear the voice, the voice, the voice is God, the voice was God, and the voice will always be God, and that he is speaking and calling you into your place and into your position and that he will put things in order for you. Whatever he has for you to do, that he will put it in order for you in the name of Jesus. And he will bring families together. He will bring uh, those things in your life uh, together that you've been saying, these things are disjointed and I need some things worked out in my life. And he, what he's doing is his, his voice is bringing things in order. I love that. I love that. Um, that's that's one of the nuggets that I took from this message tonight, and and I want to hear from you what nugget you took from uh, from from tonight's message.